Hi, in this video we will see how we can validate our data by constructing some rules and create an output like this or like this where we can represent various errors. So let's get started and this is what we're going to cover in our video. So we'll be using these packages and I need to construct my data. So if I run all these commands together I have some data and you can notice that some of the information is missing. For example, the patient ID is missing. In some cases I notice that there are same patient ID is being repeatedly used. And in some cases we have missing information and the labels are not correct. So let's see what we can do. Before we go any further, I want to create a unique ID for my data. So you notice that now we have another field called ID. So the ID field would be handy when we want to pinpoint which records contain what error. So with that, there's a very simple way of validating. In this case, let me make it very simple and say, okay, I want to check that. And what do I want to check? I want to check it against my data and see if the age field is complete. So I'll run this and it tells me that one of the record failed. And this command will give me a summary of that saying that it has more information than this. It says there are 12 items, 11 of them passed and one of them failed. And I want to plot it also and I can get a base plot out of that. It gives you the red color as the number of records which failed and the ones which have actually passed. And this just gives like uh, a heading called V1 or V2, etc. So let's go further. In this case, I want to make it more complicated. I want to say I have a set of rules and I want to call it as my rules. And I want to validate all these conditions. In the first case, I'm saying my patient ID should be unique. It should not be repeated. If I look at my data, I can notice that this record and this record uses the same patient ID. And I want to see that the patient ID is not NA. So in this case, I have patient ID, which is NA. It'll have to pinpoint that as well. And I'm giving an age range saying the age has to be between 0 and 120. In one of the records, I noticed that the age is either missing or a very high value has been given, 245 and 121. 130. Similarly, the outcome should only be in survived and died. The blood pressures, the SPP, systolic blood pressure, should only be between 0 and 300. And the diastolic blood pressure, DBP, should also be between 0 and 200. Notice that this is a different way of representing the same information. Instead of defining it like this, we can define it using the in range command. And lastly, I want to create a conditional validation as well. If the blood pressures, the SPP and the DVP, if both the blood pressures, the SPP and DVP are zero, then the outcome should be died. The patient should not be labeled as survived. One of the records has that condition saying that both the blood pressures seems to be zero and the patient has survived. For our purpose, we want to label it as, as an error. And now let's use our data and our rules. So let's run this output and see the summary of that. And let's also plot it. So this is our summary. We'll come back to that later. And this is our chart. You notice that it's actually giving V1, V2, V3. So it's not very clear what it means. So let's do one thing. So let's make our labels a bit more meaningful. In this case, what I've done is I've added another column saying this is basically the, the name of the, the validation. So if I run this, notice the difference is that in this case, we didn't give any names. And in this case, I'm giving a name saying this equals that. And if I run this and create a plot, you notice that the labels are now meaningful. It says age in range, outcome validity, etc. Now, if you're keen, you can also convert this into a ggplot object. And the benefit could be that you might be able to put more information in there, for example, a suitable title, subtitle, caption, etc. In our reports, we often need to represent this information in the form of a table. We can convert this output, which we have been getting so far, into a data frame called dout. Now with that D out, you can notice that it has various records which gives you the name, 
the value and the expression, so the true, false, and NA. So in this case, how do we distinguish our errors? So the errors are everything which is not true. So when I say D errors, I get this data field now. These are our actual errors. And using a flex table, I'm going to represent this data into a formatted table, which you can use in your reports. For example, this. In this case, we have two errors for the record ID number eight. Number one, the patient ID is not unique. And number two, the DBP is not in range. So if I go to my data and look at record ID eight, I can notice that the DBP is very high. It shouldn't be more than 200. And the patient ID is repeated. For example, the patient ID 008 is being repeated twice. So that's why we have the errors there. Now, there's another way of re representing the error. What if you wanted to see how many error types exist? So I can say, instead of instead of arranging it by ID, I want to arrange it by the name, the name of the, the error itself. And I say, look, I want to get the errors, arrange it by name, and I want to create a flex table this way. So in this case, it's telling me how many records have the age and range issue. So there's record ID number five, number 10 and 12 has the same error. And how many records have outcome validity issue? There are two records which have the, the, the outcome validity issue. Number 10, record ID number 10 and 12 and so on. So I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.